Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Birchall here. Welcome to my studio and welcome to my channel. Today I have another break the blank page video for you. After making the other video about six months ago, I discovered by completing those pages that there is no right or wrong way to start a page. Every technique, every step can be done at the beginning, the middle, the end of an art journal page or mixed media piece. But once you start, the steps that follow may change. So breaking the blank page, it gets you over the fear of facing that blank page. Some of us get into our heads a little too much. We overthink. We have too many ideas or we have no ideas. By following the ways to break the blank page and start those pages, be it the 10 that I did in the last video or the 10 that are in this video, will get you started. And once you start, you're going to find the next steps are easier and easier. The other benefit of breaking the blank page is to shake it up a little bit. Do things in a different order than what you might be used to doing. Some unexpected surprises come your way then. So for each of the 10 different ways that I'm going to showcase in this video, I'm going to do two pages using each technique in a slightly different way just to give you more ideas. And then in the upcoming weeks, I'm going to finish these pages into finished art journal pages. They'll be posted on my YouTube channel as well. I challenge you to join me to break the page in the ways that I'm showcasing in this video and then finish the page. You can come and post it in my Facebook group, Art Journaling and Mixed Media Creations. Are you ready? Let's start. Let's break the page and let the creativity flow. The number one technique, removing paint through a stencil. For this you need a couple stencils. Ones with bigger openings tend to work better. Now all the pages have been gessoed. And I'm applying a layer of acrylic paint that is slightly watered down. You want it to be able to move fairly freely. You're also going to want to have a baby wipe in your hand ready to go so you can remove the paint quickly. Now this is a fairly small page. It's approximately 7 by 10, a little bit less. So I can get a layer of wet paint on here. But the next one I'm going to show a way if, that works in where you're not applying color to the whole page first, and that'll work better on larger pages. So once you have a coat, and I mix the paint on the page to get that very organic feel. I'm placing, this is the scroll work stencil on there, and then I'm just removing the paint with a wet baby wipe. It may not pull it off perfectly, but that's okay. You're going to get that two-toned. For this technique, you absolutely need it to be gessoed for it to give you the effect that you're looking for. And then I'm pulling it off, and there is my broken page. Love the colors. Lots more layers to come. Remember, this is simply the first layer. Now I'm going to do this technique again. And the last one, I didn't water down the paint quite as much. Now here I'm going to use a couple different stencils and I'm applying paint to each part and then pulling it off instead of doing it on the whole page. If you flip over the stencil, there's wet paint on there. You can use the stencil as a stamp and that gives you some other variation in marks that I absolutely love.
If you don't like it, put another layer of paint, rub it off, and you get that layered look. And you really can't get this any other way. Here I used light aqua, bright aqua, and Prussian blue. The other one was orange and I believe I use deep violet. Number two, crumpled brown paper bag. You can use the stuff that you get in the Amazon packages, brown paper bags, different thicknesses, and you wanna crumple it up multiple times, get lots of texture on there. You can rip it up into pieces and layer it or put it down on one piece. I'm just gonna go right over the holes and punch it out afterwards. And I found it's best to use gel medium to glue it down. If you use the fluid medium, it tends to flatten the paper a little bit more. And part of the reason we're using this technique is to build up some interesting texture. I'm making sure that everything is perfectly adhered down and I'm not pulling it flat. I want those wrinkles. If you're using a brown paper bag that's a little thicker, you may have to spray it with water to get it to crumple. Spoiler alert, I'm going to take this and make a faux leather page with it. and I'm putting gel medium on the top. That's going to seal it and turn it into a non-porous surface, which is going to take mediums and the stuff that it comes next. Now on the next page, I'm just gonna use the same technique, but I'm going to rip pieces and just put them on. So only certain areas of the page are going to have that texture. If you wanted to, you could you could stamp or stencil on the brown paper before you crumpled it. That would give another look. And remember, the goal here isn't to make a complete page or even a complete background. This is simply the first step. We are breaking that page. And once we have something down there, it's going to hopefully inspire us for the next step. We'll flip through the pages and grab a page and finish it. I did let this completely dry before I went to the next step. Now you can leave it as it is, but and one of them I'm doing, the full sheet I left brown. And then I'm going to, on the other one, I'm going to apply a coat of gesso to it. I don't want the brown. So again, it depends. I just thought I would try it both ways. Here I'm just making sure all the edges are completely adhered down. You can opt to leave it brown and then maybe gesso is what you're going to do in the next step once you decide what to do. Loving all that texture. Can't wait to see how that ends up getting finished. If you have ideas, once you've broken that page, write them down and stick a post-it note on it. Number three, we're going to spray with acrylic inks through a stencil. Now these are Liquitex acrylic inks that I've mixed with water in a spray bottle. They do not clog. I've had them for a year. 
and I'm putting a stencil over it. This one is a more focal image type stencil. It's a magnolia blossom. And I'm flipping the wet side of the stencil onto another page. I'm not putting it on this page because I just want the image of the magnolia. I've masked off parts of this stencil because I don't want to use all of it. And I'm just layering this stencil using two or three different colors. The reason I like the acrylic sprays as opposed to distress sprays or dilutions is this is permanent when it's dry. Everything that I'm putting in the breaking the page stage right now on all 10 of these is permanent. It's not going to reactivate later. And the reason for that is I'm going to be applying wet layers afterwards. I don't want to have to worry about it. So now I have the same stencil in a smaller scale and I'm coming in with purple and I'm just spraying through it. Now this is not a technique that I have used a lot. I find I've always found sprays to be fairly messy, but I do love, love, love the look that it gives. And it's not something you can get in any way. So I'm cleaning up my area. I didn't like this part here, it kind of smudged, so I'm wiping, whiting it out with gesso and I'm just going to come back and respray. I love this as a background. One of the benefits I find when you're breaking a blank, blank page or doing a build your stash kind of activity is you're not thinking about the focal image. You're not fin thinking about the finished page. And so your mind becomes more creative. And I typically end up with some things that it's like, wow. Now here's the second page. And here I'm flipping the stencil over and stamping with it, with the wet acrylic spray that's on the other side. And that gives kind of a positive negative of the same stencil. With this technique and the removing paint through the stencil, you need to use that technique multiple times to figure out how to work, what stencil works better. And the only way you're going to figure that out is by doing it. This one's bronze and I'm putting it through the Harlequin stencil. All the stencils that I'm using are the Crafters Workshop and I'll list the ones that I've used in this video in the description box below if you're interested in their names. So here I'm going with teal and bronze. I'm trying with all these pages that I'm breaking to end up with a variety of colors and patterns so that when I'm flipping through it and deciding which page is gonna speak to me on that particular day when I wanna create something, I have options. flipping it over and stamping with it. Number four is smooshing. Now smooshing has been around a lot and typically you see a lot of it with distressed inks and neo colors, but I'm doing it with acrylic paints because again, it's permanent once dry. You need to thin. I, the paints that I'm using are Liquitex Basics or Artist Loft. They're medium bodied. You need to thin them down a little bit with water or a lot. And depending on how thin you have, it gives a slightly different effect. So play around and see what works and then just press it in there. Now this is good use of leftover paint. You can have blank pages there. And when you have some leftover paint, water it down and smoosh it onto a page. And you have, you've just broken that page and it's, and started it for another project.
And then the next day you might have a different color and you can layer it on. When it's dry, you can smoosh any color on top of any color. If you're doing it wet on wet without allowing it to dry, you wanna make sure that those colors are close to each other on the, on the color wheel so that they don't make something that you don't want. Here I'm adding some pink, some magenta. I absolutely love smooshing for the white spaces there. That's something I am challenged with. I always seem to fill the page up and I'm loving the smooshing. Now remember, smooshing is something you can do at any stage, as with any of these techniques. You could do it at the beginning, the middle, the end, any part of the page. Some or some or more of it may show depending on where you have it. Now on this one, instead of putting it on the table, what I'm going to do is I'm putting it on this laminated, the back of this laminated color wheel and pressing it on. This way you have a little bit more control. And you can just see the, the texture, the white space. So that was, I believe, light blue permanent and then this is deep violet and here i'm making a big splotch in the middle and applying it do you smoosh give it a try number five tags for textures First off, we're just using regular clothing tags. These came off clothing after a shopping spree. I just take them off, cut them off. I get them from my neighbors and I collect them and then you can add them to it. I'm layering them up here, kind of making, you know, an X pattern or plus side pattern. This is going to add a lot of texture to the page. There are round tags and oval tags, thicker and thin ones. You can experiment and see. I love the idea of using things that otherwise would just end up in the recycle bin. I'm using gel medium. These tags are fairly thick. Gel medium works better for that. Fluid medium is for lighter, for copy, copy paper and thinner. you're gonna to wanna to make sure this completely dries. Now the other kind of tags, you can use shipping tags. You can get those in various sizes. These ones I actually cut with my silhouette, but you can buy little mini tags. And I'm just putting them on there. They're going to add shape and texture. I'm layering a bit of it, putting them in different directions. As you're watching the video, if there's a particular page that you would like to see me do sooner than later, describe it in the comment section and ask me to do it. So once I cut off the excess and it is completely dry, I'm making sure everything's glued down properly. I am going to put a coat of gesso. I don't want that orange there. So I just wanna knock it back. I want to give this a good primer so that it takes the mediums that I'm going to add it. I want it for texture, I don't want it for color. If you're working on a page that has something on the other side, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you didn't get something messing up that page. Salt technique is number six. And this is a technique that I learned when I was doing some watercolor. 
But here, I'm not using it with watercolor or anything water soluble. I'm using the salt technique with acrylic paint. Now, for this, you're going to have to thin the acrylic paint quite a bit. And that's key for it to absorb. And if, if it, you don't get the magic happening, it's usually because you haven't had enough water or thinned the paint. The surface is gessoed, and that's necessary for this process. I'm spraying a little bit more water because I'm realizing that I did not thin it enough when I mixed it on the palette. And again, I'm mixing the paint directly on the page. And I can use, mix wet on wet because both of these colors, I know together they're going to make a purple. If you're unsure if you're going to get mud or not, just do a little test on the side. Now I'm using kosher salt or sea salt. They're larger chunks and I'm sprinkling the salt. And you can see as soon as the salt hits the water, it starts to absorb or suck up the moisture. And that's where you're going to get some incredibly great texture and pattern. I'm just dripping in. I've got some pools of water here and there and just adding more salt. Depending on the salt you use, you'll get a different effect. I like using the coarser salts, not table salt, although that does give you a, a different effect. Now you can let this dry on its own or you can use a heat tool. Here I'm mixing light blue permanent and hooker's green. Adding a little bit of water because I don't quite have enough. So it is a bit of a messy technique, which is nice to have out of the way. And then you can see, as soon as I add the salt there, it just sucks up the moisture and you start getting that patterning. Now, once this is completely dry, and if you use a heat tool, you're gonna to wanna to let it cool. You want to very gently, slowly but surely, rub the salt off. And while it is colored, the, ex, the stuff that's coming off is colored and you may be tempted to use it on another page, I've tried that, that doesn't really work because it absorbs or falls apart. So, into the trash it goes. Loving these. These would be nice to cut and make embellishments out of. The next one, number seven, we are going to stamp and stencil with gel medium. And I'm using gloss medium, but you it works with matte medium as well. Now, this works best without a gessoed surface. I had pre with all the pages and it kind of works, but you would get a more distinct pattern if you, it hadn't been gessoed. And I have a video where I showcase this technique with stamps. So I'm using this word stamp and stamping on it. And it's really hard. You can't quite see where it is because it's gel medium it's going to dry clear. It will also act as a resist, which is key to this, which is why you don't want to gesso the page because the gesso is kind of add, acting as a resist as well. When you put gel medium on your stamps or stencils, you're going to want to take the time to clean them before you move on. Now I'm going to take this chicken wire reverse stencil and push the gel medium through it to get that technique to get that patterning on there. It's going to give texture. And when we do the next step, you're also going to see the pattern. And because I've used gloss medium, you get a little bit of a shine. So once that is completely dry, I'm taking a makeup sponge and fairly wet paint and I'm mixing the paint on the page. And then I'm taking a baby wipe and rubbing it off the top of the gel medium. 
and you'll see how the stenciling on this one and the stamping on the other one, it turns white. It adds as a resist. So you're seeing the white that was the page underneath. And you can apply layers of color. If you used a stencil that had wider open spaces, the gel medium, you would see more white shining through. So play with the type of stencil you use. Everyone's going to give a slightly different effect. This one is the word stencil. Makeup sponge, fairly wet, adding a lot of water and rubbing it up. It's a very subtle effect here. Not every technique that we do needs to be so forward. And I'm going fairly simple with this one, keeping it pretty one color. Again, the back of my mind with all these pages, I want to end up with some variety. I want greens and yellows and oranges and blues and pinks. And I hope you can see how the word stamp, you can see that coming through after I take the baby wipe and wipe it back. Remember, this is not a finished background. This is simply the first step. So don't worry if it's blotchy because we're going to add more layers. Number eight, we are going to collage sentiments down and do some asemic writing. So we're using words. Now I have lots of sentiments from my various sentiment packs. As I'm developing them, I have some, and then I have, I have tons. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to just collage this down. You could stamp sentiments on paper and glue it down. Now the paper's gonna add some texture and I just want all the words. So I picked sentiments here that are on the same kind of theme. Some of it, the letters and words are going to shine through. I can maybe choose some of the words to come through to the end, block off some of them, some of the ones that I don't want to see. I have no idea where this is going to go. I've never done this. but it's a great way of using something that you have in your stash. I have way too much of it. So I'm curious how this is going to work. Now, a semic writing is just kind of nonsense writing. You accentuate the upward and downward loops. You squish it all together. You can write nonsense words, or you can actually write what you're feeling and put it under. What you're going to see in the end is the illusion of script. It's basic mark making. So don't panic too much. I've done this with my fine line applicator. Here I'm using my Posca pen. And I'm going round and round, but I could do it any old way. My goal here is to get some marks on the page. And I always love how the asemic writing looks at the end, little bits peeking through. Number nine, we are going to apply paint or scrape paint with a key card or a palette knife. Now, depending on the palette knife you use, you're going to get a slightly different effect. Each one's going to give a bit of a different mark. This is another technique that's great when you have leftover paint. You have a little leftover paint. You take your key card or your palette knife, grab a blank page and scrape it on. The next time you have some more paint, you can scrape it on. At some point, you're going to say, oh, I've got enough color here. This looks great. I'm ready to make a page. So we're not wasting our paints. 
and we're jump starting a background. Here I'm using light blue permanent and yellow green. This is cadmium yellow. Just using a, some of the different palette knives. This also gives some white space. Here I'm using bright aqua. Yeah, I wasn't really fond of this color combo, I gotta tell you. So I grab some gesso and I'm knocking it back a little bit. And then I decide I'm just gonna add some Prussian blue. But play with the colors. At this stage, I really liked it. I thought I, I, with that little bit of yellow in it, it just seemed to work. Coming up, the tenth way, we are going to use drywall tape. You can get these rolls fairly inexpensively. And you can cut them any shape and glue them down to your page. You can also use it as a stencil, and I'm going to use it in both ways. And I apologize, this is off screen. I have a new mount for my camera, and I'm not, I'm just tweaking it a little bit. Here I'm pulling off the edge to get that frayed look. This is going to add texture to the page. And when I use it as a stencil, it'll add pattern as well. It is sticky and it glues down quite easily. Typically, I either put a coat of gel medium on top. Here I'm putting gesso. Gesso will glue it down as well, and it prepares it for whatever colorant you're going to be adding later. Now, all 10 ways that I've showcased here, remember, you can use those as second, fourth, eighth, tenth steps on a page as well. Now here I've cut a bit a rectangle and I'm pulling it to make it looks a little twisty. It gives another design feature and I'm putting multiple ones on this page. Right now, remember, I don't know what focal image I'm going to put. I don't know if I'm going to do this, which orientation. Cutting off the excess. And I'm giving it a coat of gesso as well. Now I'm using another piece of this with black acrylic paint to use as a stencil. Basically I'm using the drywall tape as a stencil to get some marks on the background. And I thought it would be nice to have some of these black marks that will peek through that are going to, it's positive negative of the same pattern. You're going to have the texture and then the other. And I have no idea how this is going to work. I am simply experimenting. I know there is drywall tape in the States. I have not been able to find any in Canada that has, it looks like punch marks, and I would love, love, love to get a hold of some of that. So 
So this is bringing us to the end of the video. Again, I challenge you to oh, join my Facebook group, Art Journaling and Mixed Media Creations, and break those pages. Do all 10 of these and post what it is like after you break the page and then where the, you take the page at the end and share your experiences with the creative community in my group. Now go grab some pages and break them and I'll see you next time.